It was the first of April, and Pitt was driving wearily along the dirt road leading to his and his wife Patricia's family cottage. He had driven three hours from his last job, and the cabin was on his way back home. Patty was supposed to meet him there. He left later than expected and saw that it was already dark. His new job as a traveling college professor kept him away from his wife, so he was looking forward to this weekend. His wife was free this weekend from her hectic nursing job, and she was due to arrive yesterday to stock the cottage with food and drink. She was a charming young woman with alluring brown eyes and a thin but well-built body. In her nurse's robe, she attracted the attention of many men. Pitt met Patty seven years ago at his brother Tom's college graduation. She had just enrolled in the nursing program and came to her friend Marcia's graduation, who was also graduating. Tom was dating Marcia, so when the two couples went out for dinner, Pitt and Patty hit it off immediately. She had very little sexual experience, and Pitt was happy to give her some. Ten months later, they got married. Pitt was attracted to Patty's magnetic personality. She was always sociable and never met strangers. Recently, they started talking about starting a family and moving out of a rented apartment. Here it is, he smiled, turning off the dirt road towards a small lake, and was surprised that her car was not there. He thought about calling, but the cell phone signal in the mountains was too weak. After parking the car, he carried his small bag to the door. It was locked, but he knew where the key was hidden. Going inside, he saw that no one had been there for a long time. Since it was a long drive back through the mountains to civilization and it was almost dark, he decided to sit and wait. He thought he might have gotten her arrival time wrong, and then it dawned on him. Shit, today is April 1st. They used to make fun of each other on this day every year. Perhaps she will arrive later or wait until tomorrow morning. He thought about leaving, but decided to wait a little longer. But when he examined the house, there was no food or drinks in it. This angered him and he decided to leave. When he left the house, he saw headlights driving along the road. He decided that it was his wife's car, but when she approached, he saw that it was a blonde in a red sports car. Did she take that joke too far? He whispered, not addressing anyone. The small car stopped at the threshold and the window rolled down. Are you Pitt Avery? Asked the young beauty. He laughed. I know it's an April Fool's joke. Ha ha ha. I'll play along. Yes, I'm Pitt. She got out of the car and struck a pose. I'm not kidding. I was hired to deliver this to you and wait for you to read it. She handed him a sealed envelope. She didn't say I was being served, he thought, thinking it was still a joke. Pitt, honey, first of all, I want to tell you that today I love you more than ever. I think we have a perfect marriage and I never wanted to have sex with anyone else. Many men approached me, but I never thought about cheating on you. Until recently, these attempts were unsuccessful. There was a new doctor at the university hospital, and I had a crush on him. This is not love, baby. Lust. I have to do this to get it out of my head. He's married and has a young son, so there's no chance it'll be anything else. He loves his wife as much as I love you. Today I left town with him, and we will spend the weekend together to get rid of this desire in my fantasies. To make things fair, and make sure you don't end up in a serious relationship with another woman, I hired Chantel, an available high-class girl, to make sure you experience the same high level of passion that I did. Since I can't let her have sex with you in our bed, I decided a secluded cabin would be better. I will return home around 6 p.m. on Sunday, clean and ready to continue my married life with you. We will never say a word about this weekend and pretend it never happened. I hope and pray that you understand my need to do this. I'm confident that our love is strong enough to carry us through this into the rest of our lives together. I love you and only you. Patty's P.S. I don't have a phone, so don't try to call or find me. He reread the letter again and realized that it was real. Do you have a pen? She smiled. Yes, but you don't have to sign it. No, but you will sign after I write that you delivered this to me with instructions from my wife, Patty Avery, and that she paid you to have sex with me and I.
refused. You can just sign it with your real name. You must have a driver's license so I can verify that this is your legal name. I'll sign, but do you understand what you're giving up? She giggled as she did a 360-degree turn, showing off her cute bubble butt. He took a pen from his briefcase and wrote what he said earlier. She frowned. You are sure? He ignored her question. Now be careful on the way back because there are a lot of animals on the road at night. And don't tell my wife I said no. Then she won't demand a refund. My lips are sealed. Are you sure there's nothing I can do for you? You seem sweet and very likable. No thanks. I have a lot to plan. She showed him her driver's license and signed the letter. Do you mind if I stay the night? I'm afraid to drive back along the dark road. He read her name on her driver's license and thought about the danger. Okay, Sarah Davis, but only without any Shuramura, and you will sleep in another bedroom. If you try to have sex, you'll fly out of the house. Wow, this has never happened to me. This is great. I'm now planning to get involved with an escort since my college payment is due next week. I am soon graduating from college with a degree in textile engineering. Is it true? My friend is hiring textile engineers. Give me your resume after you graduate from college, and I'll see what I can do for you. He saw her smile and moved towards him to hug him, but he held out his hand. Sorry, no physical contact. That evening, the two of them ate some food and drinks from the three bags Patty had instructed her to take with her. They sat in front of the fireplace as he told her his story about how he met his wife in high school and how it had been a storybook romance until now. They soon relaxed from any pressure associated with sex and immediately hit it off. She was a good listener and sympathized with this man who was being cuckolded. He talked about how they planned to start a family after she got her master's degree in nursing and how they were going to move out of their small rented apartment into a house. She saw tears forming in his eyes and broke her promise not to touch him. Pitt finally broke down and hid his face so she wouldn't see his tears. But this time, when she went to hug him, he found himself in her arms. There was no lust or sex in this. She was just trying to soothe his pain. Come on, let it out. He did just that for the next few minutes. Then he stopped and moved away. I'm still not going to... I know. That's what I like about you. Now, can I tell my story? Of course, we have the whole night ahead of us. I was born poor in the mountains of Kentucky. My father was a miner, and my mother washed other people's clothes. I did very well at school, but from the age of 12 I had to work in different jobs. In high school, when others were dating and going to parties, I had to work and study as hard as I could. Plus, I was flat-chested and skinny, so not many guys even looked my way. This may surprise you, but I went to college as a virgin. I got a good scholarship for my high scores in math and science and got into a good college. But since I needed to pay expenses and buy a car, I had to continue working. When I finished the first course, my body began to change. And soon I began to receive invitations to dates. She stopped and took a sip of the wine they found in the closet. Having no experience communicating with guys... I made several mistakes, and they took advantage of me. I thought guys liked me, but it turned out that they just wanted sex. Finally, I met a guy who, it seemed to me, was on the same level. He didn't even try to kiss me until the third date. Everything seemed fine until the Christmas holidays. He went home and didn't even try to call me. I thought it was over until he came back to school and called as if the last ten days had never happened. It took a few weeks, but I forgave him and we started sleeping together. One night I told him I loved him, but he didn't say anything back. I mean, he showed that he loved me, but he never said it. So I told him about it. He burst into tears and began to apologize for the fact that I was his girlfriend here. But he also had a girlfriend at home to whom he proposed. He said he liked being with me and he couldn't make a decision. So I decided for him. You kicked his ass, Pitt chuckled. Oh, yes in front of the entire dining room full of our friends. But it made me feel the sour taste of relationships and getting close to anyone. I knew I needed more money and my roommate suggested that I take up escorting. At first it was just like that. Escort without the possibility of providing sex. But the money was not enough and I started giving pleasure with my hands. They didn't offer enough money to let someone fuck me. 
until your wife offered me $3,000 to spend the weekend with you. She told me that you are good in bed and that your size is much larger than average. And here we are. If I'm as good in bed as she said, then why does she do this? I actually asked her about it and she said it was just to get something weird and that he went on an all-out seduction to get her. And to make sure she stayed married, she hired me to balance out their date. I think he paid most of the money. They both fell silent, leaning back on the pillows and watched the hot coals fly up the chimney. He put his arm around her shoulders and kissed her forehead. Thank you. You made the worst day of my life a little better. She turned and looked into his eyes. She's a fool and a stupid idiot for taking such a risk of losing you. I'll tell you right now that there aren't many good men in the world. I only wish I could find you after this week and start a new life. They hugged even tighter and soon fell asleep in each other's arms. The next morning, Sarah woke up to the smell of cooking bacon and rolled over to see Pitt standing by the stove. Mmm, it smells like something delicious. He turned around. How do you like your eggs? Scrambled eggs. Like our whole life now. They both laughed. He made some toast and carried the full plates to the table. I've prepared some coffee if you want. Yes, please. But I really need to go to the toilet. She moaned, walked to the nearest door, and turned the knob. Don't pee in the closet! He grinned. Don't make me laugh, she cried, crossing her legs and walking quickly in small steps. That door, he pointed to the next door on the right. While you're there, could you take off all that makeup and let your hair down? Boy, you surprise me, she grinned, moving faster. He heard the sound of water, and after a few minutes, she came out, looking like a natural woman and not a rogue. She let go of the pink lace blouse and let it hang down over her skinny jeans. Her skin was clear and pink, and her light brown hair was like his mother's. Much better. Why? I mean, didn't I at least turn you on? Hell yes. I'd have to be dead not to get horny. I just want to meet Sarah, not Chantel. Pitt Avery, do you always say the right things? She ate a lot not caring about her figure for a change. I forgot what bacon tastes like. She helped him clean up and took her suitcase. I think it's time for me to say goodbye. He walked to the door and blocked her path. I was thinking, my wife paid you to stay with me for the whole weekend, so how about that? But you said no sex? I can't go back now and wait for her to get her cheating ass back after having sex with that asshole doctor. Therefore, I would prefer that you stay with me so that we can get to know each other better. But I can't have sex with you, otherwise I'd be as bad as her. Okay, but what are we going to do? Well, I'd love to talk to you, and I think there are some card and board games in the closet outside the bedroom that we can play. We can go for a walk and even swim. But I didn't bring a swimsuit with me, she smiled. I said we can't have sex. Watching and fooling around isn't that bad, especially since I'm planning on divorcing her as soon as we get back. Agreed, Mr. Avery. Please call me Pitt. Where did you get that name? When I was born, my face was wrinkled like a pit bull dog, and my parents thought it was funny. I guess they could call me Pug, so that's not too bad. Your face looks really good right now, she teased. Who's talking, Chantel or Sarah? Chantel is finished. Please don't call me that anymore. Agreed. Patty was nervous after she wrote a note to her husband and gave it to the escort. Dr. Evan gave her $2,000, but she added more from her personal account to make sure she had a good, clean escort. And getting one who hadn't had sex before was a plus. She didn't want to risk contracting a sexually transmitted disease. The lover she was meeting this weekend was supposed to pick her up around six in the evening. Pitt wrote to her early that morning to confirm that he would arrive at the cottage shortly before dark. Chantel confirmed that she would arrive just after dark. At first, she didn't want to risk losing the love of her life, Pitt, but Dr. Evan Peters convinced her that if the escort was expensive, he would even the score and accept her. She had planned for it to be just one weekend, so they could continue with their plans of buying a house and having children. Her parents loved Pitt like their own son, 
and his parents treated her the same way. Everything was great until she started itching when Dr. Evan Peters showed up. She fought him until he cornered her in a storage room and kissed her. They kissed for some time, and when he left, he whispered, Now you are mine. Evan showed up on time and was dressed casually. She did not want him to enter the house, but he walked around her and began to walk around the apartment. Not bad for a teacher and future head nurse. A little small. Dr. Peters, we need to go. I don't want any of the neighbors to see us here anymore. You can't wait to get me into bed, huh? He grinned. Actually, I've been horny since this morning, and I need to take care of this before we get there. Also, now you can call me Dr. Evan. I... I don't think so. I want to leave now. Patty. 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 I gave you a lot of money to keep your cuckolded weakling husband busy so you can at least do what I ask, right? She realized that she now had an obligation and felt excited at being told to do such a vile thing. Okay, here? She asked, reaching for his zipper. My husband is no weakling, and if you say anything more about him, our weekend will be over. Not here. In your bed. He threw away insults towards his husband. No, please, not there. Anywhere else. Not an option. Look, if you don't want to please me here... Why should I go away with you for two days? Once in the bedroom, she turned around and saw him undressing. What are you doing? I thought you might want to see and touch my body first. She watched him undress for her. He had an even tan, a flat stomach, and good-sized biceps. But where it mattered, he was average or below average. Having stripped naked, he lay on his back on the bed, putting his hands behind his neck. Well... Everything was not as she had imagined. It was supposed to be romantic roses, gentle caresses, massage, and a lot of foreplay. Instead, she satisfied his needs. His eyes were closed as he began to humiliate Pitt. I bet your husband can't turn you on like he does now. And just think that you have received this body for three days and two nights. When they finished, she rushed into the bathroom and closed the door. Mr. Hot Hunk turned from Dr. Hyde to Mr. Jekyll. Taking a deep breath, she returned to the bedroom and saw him naked on the marital bed. We're finished. I told you not to say anything about Pitt, she blurted out, grabbing her clothes and leaving the room. Damn, Evan said, quickly getting dressed. He knew he shouldn't have gone too far before he got her to the resort, but he knew that he still charmed her and could win her back. Patty stood with tears in her eyes and looked out the kitchen window over the sink. She thought about her loving husband in bed with a beautiful woman doing something they had never tried. It was getting dark, and she realized that it was too late to go to the cottage and stop this madness. Her thoughts were interrupted when she heard Evan's footsteps behind her. Patty, baby, I'm so sorry this happened. I thought you wanted me to be so bossy, and I promise never to mention him again. Please, let's start over and make this the best weekend of each of our lives. She felt his fingers massaging her shoulders and leaned into him again. I don't want you to be bossy. I just want to experience love with another man. She felt his hands drop from her shoulders to her soft breasts. She thought about asking him to leave, but realized she had gone too far. Nothing more until we arrive at the resort. After a long walk, Pitt watched Sarah as she began to take off her jeans to go swimming. Turn away, she blushed. He laughed. You must be joking. How many men have seen you naked? Fuck you, she said, pulling on her jeans. I told you that Chantel is gone and only Sarah remains. She burst into tears and ran out of the house. Having run back to 30M, she felt his hand on her shoulder. Sarah, please stop. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have laughed and said that. I see that you are no longer Chantel. I enjoyed meeting Sarah and want to get to know her more. But tell me now, have any men ever paid to fuck you? I didn't lie. You were supposed to be my last escort date. Even then, I planned to drink a lot of wine first. That was until I met you. Like I said, I haven't met many nice guys. Let's start over. Hi, I'm Pitt. Nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. 
How about taking a walk around this beautiful lake? They did just that, holding hands and telling each other their likes and dislikes. Both loved Elton John and CCR. They both loved to cook and loved Mexican food. When they returned, they were both hot and sweaty. Sarah, would you like to go swimming in your underwear? Yeah, I'd love to. She didn't have to ask him to turn around because he did it himself. He waited and heard her steps and voice. Ha ha, hurry up and catch me. He turned around, took off his jeans and t-shirt, and ran. She was wearing only a tiny pink bra and matching thong. Since the strip of the thong was buried in her beautiful buttocks, she looked naked. Oh, how cold, she exclaimed, taking the first step into the cold water. She turned towards him as his body slammed into hers. Both flew into the water and dived. He quickly picked her up, but she managed to swallow water. Cough, he shouted, hitting her on the back. Luckily, the water was only waist deep, and she did as he said. Keep coughing. He didn't relax until she smiled and pulled him in for one hell of a kiss. Their underwear was wet, and it looked like it was gone. Soon they could no longer feel the cold water as their tongues mingled and their hands explored. I have flowers and champagne in the trunk, Evan whispered, as they turned onto the road leading to the resort. She heard her phone buzz. Shit, I forgot to leave it at home. She looked, expecting to see Pitt's name, but saw that it was a spam call. She quickly turned off the power so he couldn't find her location on the app. Find your phone. She closed her eyes and began to imagine Pitt having sex with the beautiful Chantel. Oh God, what have I done? A few tears fell from her cheeks. A song came to mind. It's too late to turn back now. Evan walked into the office, checked in, and a few minutes later stopped in front of the house. Here we are, beauty. He noticed her wiping her eyes. Are you okay? She couldn't look at him. Evan, I can't do this. I am so sorry. I'll give you what you paid for Chantel. Damn, he whispered quietly. He controlled his anger and leaned back in his chair. Actually, I understand, but the damage is done. He knows you're here with me now, so you might as well enjoy yourself. Now he either has sex with her or goes nuclear. Either way, you better relax and come up with a plan to meet him on Sunday night. I promise I won't force you to do anything you don't want. And if you want to go home tomorrow, I'll take you back. Really? Will you take me? So you won't get angry and tell everyone at work about it? No, damn it. I don't want anyone at work to tell my wife. Okay, I'll stay tonight and decide if I want to stay until Sunday, but we can't do anything really bad. He smiled, thinking that he still had a chance to experience this woman's sweet body. However, for the first time, he realized that an angry husband could contact his wife. It was stupid. After the kiss, Sarah pulled away and, giggling, headed towards the house, beckoning him to follow her with the index finger of her right hand. She could tell from his wet underpants that Patty hadn't been lying about his worth. She had never had intercourse with someone so big. Now he could appreciate her elastic pink buttocks and large round breasts. She definitely didn't look like a textile engineer. Intelligence and beauty are a great combination. But giving pleasure to many men and engaging in hand jobs for money was a big negative. This thought quickly lowered his libido. They hurried into the house, and while he lit logs in the fireplace, she took some towels. Once the fire was up, he turned to see her standing completely naked, holding out a large white towel. Dry me, and I'll do the same to you. His fingers trembled as he rubbed the soft fabric over her shoulders and arms. Mmm, that feels so good, she purred. She had never felt such excitement while being with a man. He ran the towel down her smooth back to the gap between her buttocks. She was amazingly beautiful. You're so wet, he whispered, removing his fingers from the towel and guiding them under her ass. Oh, God, Pitt, she moaned, turning and looking at his face in front of her dripping lips. Please. Even though she pleased men, she did not allow them to do the same to her. When his eyes closed and his mouth leaned forward, she knew he was special. It was already dark when Evan and Patty returned from the dinner next door. She turned on the phone, 
expecting to hear something from Pitt, but saw nothing. Well, he didn't go home straight away. It's obvious he's enjoying the gift, Evans said, moving up behind her and massaging her shoulders. Chantel is one of those who can seduce almost anyone. Patty closed her eyes and leaned back against him. Have you ever, you know, with Chantel? No, and she told the truth that she didn't have sex with anyone she knew. According to my fellow doctors, it just gives great pleasure. She doesn't allow them to do the same to her or kiss her on the lips. As far as I understand, this is the first date on which she agreed to have sex with her date. If I didn't know she was an escort, I would have easily fallen in love with her. Oh God, no! Patty gasped. This is what I didn't want. He can't fall in love with her. She felt his hands leave her shoulders and move lower, cupping and lightly caressing her soft breasts. She pushed them aside and turned around. I want to go home. Patty, are you going to leave me like this? He took her hand and pressed it to him. The damage has already been done, so let's just have fun and talk about how to get Pitt back. I feel responsible and want to help. Come here. He pulled her towards his strong body. I need to call him and tell him I didn't have sex with you. I will forgive him because I hired an escort. He should be home tomorrow morning. I'm sure he loves me enough to know it was a mistake. I'm sure it will happen. Alan lied. Suddenly her body betrayed her again and she pressed her lips to his neck. We can just caress each other. But first I need to take a shower. Would you like to join me? She wanted to soap and rinse his magnificent body. Yes, he answered immediately. He knew that if he played and kissed her enough, he would eventually take her. Sarah had never felt so horny before. Here she was in a romantic log cabin with the man she respected and wanted. Even if she hadn't been paid to have sex with him, she would have done it for free. Patty felt hot water running from her forehead, down her face, over her bare chest, over her flat tummy. Alan's hand smeared the soap over her back and white buttocks. This is exactly what she wanted, to feel how another man touches her body, kisses it, and caresses it. It feels so good, she purred. Young Doc pressed her back against the wall, lifted her right leg, and began to caress it. And then they had sex. Sarah woke up first and found herself pressed naked against Pitt's hardback. How lucky I am, she thought. Just one night with the man of my dreams. And I already have feelings for a man that I've never experienced before. Pitt was having a dream, or at least he thought so. Opening his eyes, he saw blonde hair rising and falling over his lower abdomen. After they had satisfied each other again, they packed up their things and started heading out. You know my soon-to-be ex-wife won't be back until noon tomorrow. Maybe after I move home and freeze a few credit cards, investments, and insurance accounts, we can rent a room in the city. I was hoping you would say that, she smiled, pressing her lips to his. Sarah would like to get to know you better, but my roommate is gone for a few weeks. Why don't you come over there? I don't think you want to be home when they get back. I do not want to be a burden. Believe me, I want you to be there so we can talk more. They took their things and moved along the winding forest road. The Saturday morning drive went quickly. Since she was already at Pitt's house, she didn't need to keep a close eye on him. When he opened the door from the garage to the condominium, he shouted, Honey, I'm home. Let's hope she doesn't answer, Sarah said, not happy about his joke. She walked through the house while he was busy cutting Patty out of his life. She saw their wedding photo above the fireplace and imagined herself in the place of the cheating wife. Pitt was still busy in his home office when she walked into the master bedroom and peered into the huge walk-in closet. Why would she risk losing it all for one fling with a cute boy? Take what you want, Pitt whispered, moving closer to her from behind and touching her earlobe with his lips. I want to make love to you on the bed. Her heart beat faster, but I thought you knew. No sexual intercourse. You're right, but I want to leave her a wet gift on the bed, as a greeting, when she returns home, as a farewell. She smiled when she heard that it might happen again in the future. Why don't you take off your clothes and get ready on the bed while I put on one of these sexy negligees? 
It was strange to lie on his marital bed and wait for not Patty, but a beautiful woman to join him. His anger overcame his sadness over his lost marriage. A few days before, they talked about starting a family. He knew he had better not see her until he cooled down, if that ever happened. His attention was drawn to the dressing room door, from which Sarah emerged wearing a nightgown, the same one that Patty had worn on their wedding night. Perfect. This time, the touching and kissing was slower. The kisses were not rushed and were enjoyable. Not having intercourse was killer, but it was important for him not to do what Party did. When they finished, there was a huge wet spot covering the center of the bed. They made the bed. Before leaving, he threw all the photos of them together in the trash, along with the wedding album. Looking into the nightstand, he saw her diamond engagement ring and put it in his pocket. This gem belonged to his grandmother. He left his wedding ring in place. He did not leave a note deciding that he had nothing to say to this cheater. Patty refused to let Dr. Evan take her again that night, but he persuaded her to stay until Sunday. Now her thoughts were mainly about marriage, and it was obvious that she was not enjoying it at all and was simply fulfilling her duties. It was around noon on Sunday morning when he parked in front of her apartment. Do you see his car? She looked around. No, that means he must have stayed with her. God bless. She turned and took his hand. Sorry for ruining our weekend. I love my husband too much to ever do that again. I understand and feel the same way about never cheating on my wife again. He lied. Afraid of being seen, Patty didn't kiss him goodbye and looked at the condominium door. Well, that's it. Now it's time to start a family and grow old with my hubby. She had no idea. She took her small suitcase to the laundry to wash away all traces and smells of adultery. She didn't pay attention to the basket that contained Pitt's dirty clothes from his trip. She was so focused on what she was going to say to Pitt that she didn't notice the wet shower floor or their missing photos until she opened the nightstand drawer and saw his wedding ring instead of hers. No! Sarah, you don't have to do this. I can rent a hotel room for a few days. They sat next to each other on the sofa, his left hand resting on her shoulder. She took his hand in hers and leaned her heat against his body. You don't have to be alone, and I really like being with you. It's crazy, but I feel like I've known you for a long time, and... He pulled back slightly and pressed his lips to hers. It was not a kiss of passion, but rather of warmth. You gave me light in the darkest time. My best friend is Patty's brother, Mike. So who knows how long this night will last. I was thinking about you taking money for this weekend. I want you to return them. But I need to pay off my... I will pay, no matter how much it is. You didn't have to stay, but you stayed anyway. As he leaned in to kiss her again, the phone buzzed. She is at home. Aren't you going to answer? No, I don't want to talk to her anymore. A few minutes later, he looked and saw that she had left a message. He deleted it without opening it. Patty knew that the only chance to save her marriage was to lie. She called his phone, and when he didn't answer, she left a message. Pitt, honey, I know you're upset, but Dr. Evan and I didn't have sex. We played a little, kissed, and touched each other, but that's it. He wanted it, but when it came down to it, I stopped him. I realized how stupid I was, and despite the fact that you spent time with an escort, I forgive you. Today I came home early and found your engagement ring. I also found my honeymoon nightgown on the floor of our closet. Please tell me you didn't let this available girl wear it. This is sacred to our marriage. I don't know where you are, but please come home. I love only you. Your wife forever. Patty. She was tired after all this with Evan and was worried about what she would say to Pitt. She decided to get some sleep and pulled back the covers from the marital bed. You bastard! She screamed when she saw a huge wet spot. The smell of it filled her nostrils and sent her running to the bathroom where she vomited. She made a commitment to not have intercourse in their bed, and that's why the house worked. Now nothing she imagined came true. Grabbing a blanket from the closet, she went downstairs and lay down on the sofa. When she woke up, it was already dark, and only the porch light gave her enough light to see. She grabbed her phone to see if Pitt had answered, but only saw a message from Evan. Well, did he give up or go nuclear? Should I be worried? 
She called him without worrying about where he was. He disappeared, and I haven't heard anything about him. But he was here and left his wedding ring, so prepare for an explosion. Damn, Patty. We could lose everything, including our jobs. Is it so? Did he leave his ring? It looks like he brought Chantel here, fucked her in our bed, and threw our pictures in the trash. Hopefully this is the final revenge. But knowing Pitt, we can expect more. I texted him that we didn't have intercourse, so you might want to use that lie with your wife. Evan hung up and sat down to watch his son chase lightning bugs in the backyard. He was so sure that Patty's husband would agree to exchange with his wife if he got a hot escort beauty in exchange. How wrong he was. The next day, Patty called Pitt's parents to see if they knew where he was. They didn't know anything and asked why she didn't know. She hung up and called her brother Mike. Hello, little sister. How are you? No, sorry. I haven't heard anything from him. Wait. What's going on? Click. Later, when she went to the store, she discovered that her credit card had been declined. It was now obvious that he no longer wanted anything to do with her and had no intention of communicating. She sent him two more text messages and left voicemails but received nothing in response. Then, unable to bear it, she called the dean of the Pitt faculty at the university, with whom they were well acquainted. Roger, this is Patty. Have you talked to Pitt? He was silent for a few seconds. Patty, I don't want to interfere. What did he say to you? Look, all I know is that he has problems in his personal life and he asked for time off. He said he was okay? From the way he spoke, I realized that he was not as cheerful as before. Goodbye, Patty. Click. No, wait. I have a week off to clear my head and think about my next move, he told Sarah. Why don't we go to Silver's restaurant for a good steak? Do you want to be seen together? What if someone sees us together? Very bad. Why don't you wear one of those sexy dresses from my wife's closet? Sure enough, as soon as they entered the restaurant, he saw one of Patty's colleagues waiting for a table. He thought about leaving, but decided to start rumors. She didn't notice him until she turned around. But the look of shock on her face told him that she knew about Patty's weekend with Dr. Evan. Oh my God. Hi, Darlene. How are you doing with David? David was her husband, and the man next to her was not him. Ho. Oh. Well, he's in Europe for a few weeks. Oh, uh, this is Jack. He started working in our wing a few months ago. Around the same time as Dr. Evan? Yes. Jack grinned. We came complete. How do you know Darlene? Jack, our table is ready, Darlene said, pulling the man by the hand. See you, Pitt. Sarah also caught a bad secret. Looks like Patty and Dr. Evil's secret tryst made the front page. Patty cried nonstop after her parents called. They spoke to Pitt's parents and all four were concerned. She had to hang up the phone to numb the pain of losing the only man she had ever loved. An hour later, her phone rang and she hoped it was Pitt. It was Darlene. Patty, how was your weekend? It's terrible, Dar. I tried to cancel everything too late. The sex was good, but not great, as I thought it would be. How's it going with Jack? Well, tonight should be the first time. I'm calling because Pitt just walked into Silver's with a hot blonde on his arm. Damn, she must be the same escort we paid for. He kept his wedding ring and canceled our credit cards. Why did I let Evan talk me into hiring a hot woman? Since he doesn't want to talk to me, I'm going in your direction. I'll be there in about 15 minutes. She keeps looking at us, Sarah whispered, picking up her menu and looking at it. She's talking on the phone and probably calling your wife. Don't call her my wife. My heart broke when I read the letter she wrote. So, Sarah, have you met anyone lately that interests you? Maybe I'm not sure yet. He seems like a nice guy, good in bed and only the good one. Well, not all the cards have been dealt yet. I'm hoping for a royal flush of hearts. She giggled and, taking his large left hand in her small right one, reached out to him. They looked at each other with googly eyes as Patty's scream pierced the air. Get away from my husband and take off my fucking dress. 
They were both so shocked that Sarah didn't notice Patty's right open palm heading towards her face. Luckily, Pitt noticed this at the last second and managed to turn her down. He grabbed Patty's right wrist and twisted it behind her back. Stop it now. The entire restaurant froze and fell silent. Everyone turned and stared at the commotion. Patty suddenly went limp and lost consciousness, forcing Pitt to catch her. Darlene ran up. I'm a nurse so please step away and someone get me some water and a clean towel. A cold towel from the bar woke her up. At first she did not understand where she was until she saw her husband. Pitt, honey, I'm back, and I have your ring in my pocket. This, this was all a misunderstanding. I didn't have sex with Evan, but, but it's okay that you had sex with her. She glared at Chantel. Patty, sit down and drink this, Darlene whispered, handing her friend a glass of water. She looked around for Jack, but he seemed to have disappeared. Patty sipped her water and kept her eyes on Pitt, who walked toward the escort. Let's go, Sarah. Her name is not Sarah, but Chantel. And she is a fucking slut. Patty picked up a glass of water and raised her hand to throw it at the beautiful woman. Pitt jumped in front of Sarah and the partially filled glass of water hit his left upper body. Luckily, it didn't break until it hit the floor. Ah! He groaned, realizing that the blow was strong. He glanced at Patty and walked away from the broken glass, taking Sarah with him. The evening manager had a smartphone filming everything that happened. Pitt recognized him. Sean, send me a copy. You do have my phone number, right? Yes, I wrote everything down. Do you want me to call 911? They are here, said the administrator. I called 911 when the woman fainted. What's happened? Asked the pretty paramedic, carrying her medical bag to Patty, who was sitting on the floor, supported by Darlene. She fainted, Darlene said. I'm a nurse, and her pulse is very high. She needs to get her blood pressure checked. Also, I think she hurt her right elbow and her head when she fell. While the female paramedic checked Patty's vitals, her partner moved to Pitt, who was in pain trying to move his shoulder. The bartender was removing the glass. Pitt, baby. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you, honey. Let's go home and I'll make up for this weekend, Patty cried. I think you've done enough damage for today. I give you until tomorrow evening to pick up your things and get out of the apartment. Get yourself a lawyer because it's over between us. Sir, you need to go to the emergency room for an x-ray, the male paramedic said. Looks like you have a crack in your collarbone. Darlene called Patty's brother Mike to come and talk to her sister, who did not want to go to the hospital where she worked. They both knew that rumors would spread around. Ten minutes later, Mike arrived, but Pitt and Sarah had already left. What the hell happened? Oh, God, Mike. Pitt had just left for the hospital with the escort I hired. I hit him with a glass. He told me not to come home. What? You're talking nonsense. Ma'am, I think you only have bruises on your arm and I don't see any marks on your head. Doesn't anything hurt you anymore? Only the heart. I just lost the only man I've ever loved. Pitt had enough to worry about with Patty, who was desperately fighting a divorce so she could date Sarah. After she hit him with a glass of water, he was able to get a restraining order. She gave in when he threatened to send everyone the letter and messages she sent him. It was very clear that she and Dr. Evan had paid an escort to have sex with Pitt over the weekend in exchange for the two of them having sex with each other until they passed out. Because of the state they were in, the adultery charge stood because Pitt had the evidence and she didn't. Sarah returned the money to the cheaters for escort work and this was enough for the judge to refuse alimony and rule on a 70-30 split in Pitt's favor. Since this was Dr. Evans' second affair, his wife got the gold mine, and he got the mine. He lost his job at the hospital and ended up working the night shift at a local medical pharmacy, Express. As you might expect, Patty suffered a nervous breakdown, and it took her more than a year to realize that her marriage to Pitt was over. Every time a man came into her room, she thought it was Pitt who had come to take her home. She began dating men again, but none of them could replace Pitt. Her biggest regret was paying for an escort who later fell in love with him. After retiring, she moved to the villages Florida and became a bingo expert. 
Sarah graduated with honors from college and moved to North Carolina to escape the embarrassing looks and nasty names that came her way. She lived in the same apartment with another graduate classmate and was working as an engineer when there was a knock on her apartment door. She decided that it was to a neighbor and almost fell when she saw Pitt standing with a large bouquet of pink roses. On the bouquet was a card with her name, Sarah. It had been a year since they first met, and they had only exchanged a few messages. Oh my God, what? Why? I don't understand. Pitt paid a private investigator to follow Sarah and knew that she spent most of her time at work. She really didn't date much and stopped working as an escort. He wanted to be free and clear from the divorce process before looking into his heart to plan for the future. Many women flocked to him, but he could not get rid of the bad experience with Patty. He reminisced about his time with Sarah many times and decided to go for it. God, he hoped he wasn't wrong. Hello, ma'am. My name is Pitt, and I'm glad to meet you. His smile melted her heart. She played along with him. How do you know my name, sir? And how do you know where I live? What is this, an April joke? She wanted to jump into his arms and wrap her legs around him. You see, I was driving through Kentucky and I stopped and asked a nice man at this gas station if he knew a beautiful blonde Davis who lived nearby. I told him that her dad was a coal miner and her mom washed clothes. The older man said his brother Samuel Davis is a retired miner and his daughter-in-law opened it a laundromat a block away. You must mean my niece is Sarah Sue, who works as a major engineer somewhere in North Carolina. Why are you asking? I need to ask your brother a question. Ooh, maybe I should call him and tell him to get his shotgun ready? Pitt laughed. No, not exactly, but close. So no, ma'am, this is not an April Fool's joke. I talked to your father and asked his permission. Sarah's eyes were wet, and her smile could light up a football stadium. Yes, my answer is yes. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.